guys, in this video, it's kind of a bit of a continuation of the skin flesh cake that I did the other day. I didn't have time to get all the video clips into the first video, so this one's just the cookie part. And it really was just me playing around with cookies. Now, I just baked some rectangle gingerbread cookies. And the first one I really wanted to try was a skin effect, but with an imprint of like some text. So I used this little text thing and it does say happy haunting, but I felt it wasn't really creepy enough. I maybe should have done that with something a bit more cutesy. And we're going to put in the little flesh wounds. I want it to look like nail claws have gone through it just the same way as we did in the original cake video so we just used the dresden tool and kind of put in some curved lines almost like long thin leafed shapes and then we kind of press it inside with the other end of my dresden tool just make it a little bit lumpy and bumpy and then the red stuff we put in there is actually piping gel mixed with red food coloring now what i'm going to do is put links below the video to everything that i've used you can find most of the stuff in my online website but obviously you don't have to buy it from me guys and then the happy haunting bit I have just coloured in gently with a black pen. And then I also wanted to play around with the stamps that leave an indentation rather than a raised effect like it was on the last one. And I was trying to think of Halloweeny words and I just put 666 and then Richard told me that it's actually bad luck to put 666. I didn't know that. He's very superstitious about kind of things like that. So I've just put in a couple of lines where I think that I'm going to have this little scar and I want it to look a bit raised. I say scar, scar slash wound. So you want the edges to look a bit raised and then just kind of mush up that middle bit a little bit. And then I'm just pressing in to leave little marks where I want it to look like there's been stitching added. And again, more of that red piping gel. It doesn't taste of a huge amount of stuff. It's slightly sweet is the piping gel. And I figured if it had like finger, bloody fingerprints on it, it looked a little bit more gruesome. And of course splattering on bits of the red as well. And then I tried to colour in the 666 with a pen. It actually looks a bit more like it says BBB. So I think next time I maybe do it without. Because I think the cookie would have looked nicer without any kind of wording or numbering on there. And I'm just using some really thinly rolled black fondant now to put in uh, stitching. <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot the word for stitching. But you can use whatever colour you want, guys. And the rectangle one that I made kind of previously to the video, which has had time to set, has got wafer paper so it's edible paper is the wafer paper um on top and i'll show you that one in a minute as well guys but you can have a play around you can also do the same kind of thing on the cupcakes now the eyeballs are sprinkles that i've colored in with felt pen and i do show you how i use them on the previous video so i'll just put a little link into this video now which you can click for the other video but guys you can go with whatever shape cookies you want to have a go with you can sand down the edges to straighten them i just forgot my little um I don't know what you call it. It looks like a grater, but it's not a grater. But take whatever flesh colour you want. So this time I'm going to go for a paler flesh colour. On the other one I went for a slightly darker colour. And I'm just going to put it on this. Again, you can stick it with a tiny bit of royal icing. I tend to use royal icing because it doesn't make my cookies go too soggy. If I use like edible glue, it can make them go a little bit soft. So I did do this as part of a Facebook Live, this video, guys. I don't know if I managed to delete the Facebook Live or get rid of it or what. I'm not sure. So apologies if you were looking for it on my Facebook page and you can't find it. I don't know where it's, it's gone. But this is a slightly sped up version of it anyway. So again, we're putting in those same little lines and marks. So can you see I try to lift the edges of the skin a little bit so it's not completely flat. And then kind of mush it like so. So if you leave it like that, it just looks like more like claw marks. So this is what I've used for it, guys. So this is the cake gel. And then the food colouring. So I used the Christmas red, but you might find if it's too bright, you can put a little bit of chestnut in just to darken the blood. Or, you know, you might want to go darker still. I don't know a lot about what colour blood is, if you're dead or not dead. I don't know. <laughs> go with whatever you guys fancy. Again, a bit of a splatter effect on there. And you don't even have to put wounds on every cookie that you do. It's nice if they're all a little bit different. And just watch out for everything around you and the workspace because I managed to splatter this sticky piping gel on everything on my table. And of course, if it looks a bit creepy if you use your fingers. However, if you're going to be doing these for people, mine are not for anybody and I have washed my hands, but I would recommend wearing food safe gloves if you're making them for other people and you're going to put your fingers on. So for the cupcake ones, I used foam domes to create the shape. So it's just a circle. 
I'm just going to cut out another rectangle while I've got this here. And I was going to try teeth marks. Now, in the Facebook Live, somebody suggested... I think they suggested teeth anyway. Either that or I just tried it anyway. I can't remember. I don't know if it looks like teeth marks. I was trying to go on what my own teeth marks look like when I bite into things. But yeah, for the cupcake one, you're just going to do the same thing as we have been doing before. Just don't go too thick with the fondant on either the cookie or the biscuit. And you're just going to wrap it gently around this foam dome. Just going to poke in some little holes for the stitching again. And then if I kind of press in little lines coming out from that hole, I thought it might make the skin look a bit stretched. And then in there with our piping gel again. So some nice thin bits of stitching. You might need to just add a bit of water or edible glue just to stick these in place. And of course you can use royal icing and pipe these on. Now, I don't use a lot of royal icing. I know I did actually make some for sticking the fondant to the cookies, so I have no excuse. I should have just dyed some a different colour and piped it on, um, but I was too lazy. If you're doing a lot of them, it's going to be quicker to pipe on the stitching rather than rolling it like I have done. And just watch out for when you press really hard, you can see it will go through a little bit. But don't pull it off your dome until the set, guys. And then this is the wafer paper that I did show you earlier. So I soaked it in a mixture of water, piping gel and food colouring. And then I tried to kind of scrunch it up and put it on the cookie. And guys, I thought it might work quite well with the cupcakes to put some filling in. Now, this time it's not piping gel. It's actually a caramel sauce that I've just mixed red food colour in. And I'm just cutting a little bit out of the cupcake, putting the lid back on. And then we're going to pipe some red coloured buttercream or kind of, it's like a deep burgundy colour. And then you can pull the top off the foam down, but just make sure it's had time to firm up a little bit. And then you can stick it on top of your cupcake. And you can put those little eyeballs and things on that we made in a different video. Here's just a little selection of some of the ones I've made. And let's see if it oozes. So the idea of this red caramel sauce in the middle is that it oozes and looks a little bit bloody and a little bit gory. If you have them sat for a few hours, I think the caramel sauce absorbs slightly into the sponge. And it's a red velvet that I've got on my cupcake here, guys. It did drip a little bit, but not as much as I would have hoped. But that means it's less messy for people to eat if it doesn't drip too much. <laughs> okay, guys, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I say, it is part of one that I did before. And there was too much footage to stick it all in one. But it is very much a continuation of me making the flesh cake. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do subscribe to my channel. Where you can find weekly tutorials of me decorating cakes. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.